Good evening, everyone. Um, I wanted to get on. I haven't streamed in a while, so I wanted to get on and talk a little bit about my channel and what's going on with it. The last time I streamed, I checked the history, was the first week of December, two and a half uh, months ago. So it's been a really long time. And even before then, I had some spotty rough patches with uh, doing streams. I think I had scheduling issues as far back as September with a lot of stop and go and then this long hiatus, which was really unplanned. Um, no, a lot happened in December. The uh, desktop from which I did most of my streaming, it broke. The video card died. So that's been completely unusable. So I've been using my laptop and I was able to set up my laptop with a two screen setup and it's pretty much what I need for regular work, but the laptop is just because of what it is gets in the way of a lot of my stream formats and it's a lot harder to stream from the laptop. So for technical reasons, my um, stream, my stream was largely off because of technical reasons. I wanted to make the laptop work. There were so many times I thought about maybe getting on and doing a show. But uh, December, the holiday season, was really tough for me this year because it's the, I don't want to talk about it, but the holiday season in general is going to be tough for me going forward. But double so th this year for reasons I don't want to get into. And then I was going to go back to it in January and I was planning the state of the channel uh, talk for as far back as the second week of January, but time kept slipping away from me. So here I am. Better late than never, right? The show, it didn't go away. It just took a break for a while. I definitely want to come back and do, uh, I want to do a lot more with my show than I have been. I mean, it's a variety show, but I want my formats to continue to get better. If you look at my YouTube channel where I keep all my past episodes, you'll see the kind of variety that we do on this channel. We do a lot of different things and we're going to do a lot more different things as we continue and our existing formats are going to only get better from here. Um, so in the next couple weeks while I wait for my uh, desktop to be fixed, which could be as early as next weekend, but I'm going to try a few streams from the laptop and as we go through the formats, I'll explain why it's so much harder to stream from the laptop. And then when I'm done talking, we're going to do a couple live technical tests. There's some browser-based uh, viewer participation games that I want to test out for future viewer participation nights. Because that's the thing I want to do on this channel is viewer participation nights. I want to do them a lot more regularly than I used to. Um, and... We, uh, I also want to technical test some things in Morrowind, if at all possible. Um, but that's not a, as urgent because that I have actually done some testing in a gaming discord. I went live in a gaming discord a couple times. So there's some... That test I might not do tonight. But I just want to see. But I haven't really looked at how the my uh, revised Morrowind settings work with the studio. I haven't tried streaming Morrowind through Twitch since I've changed some settings. So I might do that test tonight. Hmm. Alright, so let's start by... Uh, now I've talked a little bit about the, uh, the reasons for the hiatus. Um, now I want to go into the various different formats that I do on this channel and talk about each of them. Morrowind. Morrowind is the main game I stream on my channel. <laughs> There's a lot to say about Morrowind. There's a lot I want to do with Morrowind this year. Last year I did a lot of Morrowind shenanigans, for example, with mods and things and cheat utilities. This year I'm going to continue to explore different mods play around with my cheat utilities, 
But there's a few big things going on this year. The first thing is that Morrowind's, the game's 20th anniversary is in May. And I want to do a really special stream event to uh, celebrate the 20th anniversary of Morrowind. Because Morrowind is my favorite computer game all time. And I, it deserves to be celebrated by me on its anniversary. One idea I had for... One idea I had for do for the Morrowind anniversary is maybe a stream where I go into the construction set for a few hours and do a throwback to the very first mod that I ever tried to put together. It was a practice mod. I never released it. I never actually finished it. It was a little museum library thing that I uh, put together. It was full of copies of some of the artifacts in the game, the, t the uh, artifacts from the Tamriel lore books. I had some armor sets in there. I put in creature statues of the various creatures in the game. There was, um, I put in statues of some of the NPCs in the game, the notable ones like Jube, Caius, you know, Vivek. Dagother were there, some other guys. Um, there was there was a lot of stuff. There were a lot of artifacts from the main quest, like the uh, Nerevarine and Hortator items, Six House items. I mean, it was a nice library that I put together, my first attempt at modding that, that I did as a practice mod. But I never released it. So I, I was thinking one thing that I could do for the anniversary is maybe do a stream in the construction set where I go in and I try to rebuild my library. Not sure if that's going to be my anniversary show. Another thing I want to do, one stream I tried to play, I tried to start the main quest without cheat utilities and it went poorly. I kept getting killed over and over and over again. But I do kind of want to, I mean, I call myself a Morrowind fanatic, and yet I can't play without cheats. I've become soft over the years with all my mod access and stuff, so I, I want to go back and try again. I want to try again, but this time I want to look up the location of that one uh, frustrating item before I go in so we don't get hung up and die in that one cave a hundred times. And that maybe we can move on and actually over the course of several weeks play through the main quest without cheats, possibly. It's a thing I'm thinking about doing. And another thing that's going to be big in Morrowind this year is uh, Tamriel Rebuilt is getting ready for another content expansion. They're going to be adding some of the Halalu cities uh, west of the Thir River. So um, there will definitely be a lot more Tamriel Rebuilt exploration. And some of those cities aren't going to look uh, dead ghost towns anymore. There's still a long way to go. They still have several years of development left. And the other big thing that they updated is they did reworks of a few of the uh, imperial cities in the eastern half of the province. So it'll be nice to check those out as well, the new versions. So those are the big th three things that are going on in Morrowind. There's a few other things I wanted to check out. I found like this uh, castle mod which has a bunch of dress shops. So there might be a stream where we just, uh, we make a girl character and we run around trying on different dresses. I mean, that's a thing we can do because exploring mods is one of the things I like to do. Um, another thing we can do in Morrowind is, oh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, one thing, one idea I had all the way back when I did the old Evenheart stream a uh, long time ago, is one idea was to maybe create a library room in the editor and put some books in it and then go in and do streams where I just read the literature. I do maybe dramatic readings, maybe straight, straight readings. I don't know, but basically read the books. Uh, re reading the books of, of uh, Marwin, making a, uh, maybe making a performance of it. I think that would be a fun stream to do. I just never got around to actually doing it. And maybe the 36 Lessons of Vivek, but we would have to work up to that because I think it would take me a few hours to read that series. All right. I've been talking about Morrowind a long time. 
and there's so many other formats I need to talk about that I do on this channel. One of my more popular, and by popular, I mean in terms of what my family likes to watch, <laughs> is my uh, speed sketching streams. I have done a number of uh, speed sketching episodes so far. I've drawn a lot of Disney characters. I've drawn some video game characters. Uh, some My Little Pony. I mean, I, I draw a bunch of uh, cartoon characters mainly. And uh, I want to draw more. And I've, been, and I've had some ideas for some theme nights with the art. Like some, some sketching nights will be whatever I feel like. And some sketching nights will be a viewer request if I have chatters that night. And then there are some event streams I thought about doing, like uh, put the put all the Marvel superheroes and supervillains from the MCU into a into the uh, random.org uh, name randomizer, and do a night where I just draw random Marvel characters. I think that would be fun. I've done a couple. I've done Thanos, not very good. And Captain America, they both could use some improvement. My Superman was pretty good, but I'm not into DC like I am with Marvel, so I may not, I may or may not do a DC night. If I do a Marvel night, I might do a DC night, but I'm not as familiar with those characters. Uh, I also want to do a lot more Disney art. Uh, I had a couple ideas for uh, Disney themes, some of them movie specific, like I was going to do a uh, Moana art night where in between the sketches I uh, play the songs on, on, on my kazoo. More on the kazoo later. And then uh, other ideas I had were for uh, Disney Villains Night, Disney Blue Night. I mean, there's all sorts of themes I can do just in Disney. I want to do more Nintendo characters as well. So there's a lot to, uh, there's a lot of uh, things that I can do on my uh, sketching streams. So that's going to be a format that I continue a lot of. One of the reasons why I haven't been able to do art streams with the laptop and I won't be able to do art streams with the laptop is because the laptop takes up this the portion of the desk that I would be using for where, where that I would be placing the paper for doing the, the speed sketches. I cannot put both the laptop and my second screen and my paper on my desk. It's just not big enough. So the art streams cannot return until I return to the desktop. And I forgot to talk about the technical limitations with why Morrowind wasn't working out, but we can do that when I do my test later. We'll, go, we'll revisit Morrowind later this stream. So um, art it, and pretty much any of my tabletop formats cannot be done as long as I'm streaming from the laptop. When I return to the desktop, those formats can return. Oh, and by the way, uh, this was my uh, Princess Celestia sketch from stream, in case you wanted to know the character that was up here. Uh, she's from My Little Pony. All right, Bakugan. And I actually had two different sub-formats for Bakugan, both involving the tabletop, and both of them um, impossible to do until I return to the desktop, just because they're tabletop streams. The one format I did was rolling practice, where I put my uh, play mat on my desk. It looks really nice. And then I roll into the camera. I roll the Bakugan balls and try to try to open them on the cores. Rolling practice is fun. Um, and uh, the other thing I did on my channel with Bakugan is whenever I would add to my Baku Bakugan collection, I would sometimes do unboxings where I would unbox the uh, characters on stream and and show off the new characters as I got them. Unfortunately, uh, my money source dried up, and so it's actually been... I don't think I've bought a new Bakugan since October, and one of my Bakugan is, uh, was sent out for repair because it broke during practice one day. And the the postal service lost it on the return, so yeah. And it was from a five pack, so uh, it's gonna. I'm gonna try my best to replace it because there's no no way to um. 
I need to get that Bakugan back somehow. I don't want to talk about it anymore. The other thing is uh, the Pegatrix collection, because I haven't been able to connect, um, uh, to collect, I mean, I'm still sitting at the 14 out of the 20 Pegatrix I wanted. And then I learned that two or three of the starter sets with the pe with the uh, with Pegatrix I was missing were not actually released in the states, so um, I'll be hard pressed to find them in international markets. If I want to have my full twenty Pegatrix collection, then um, I've got some hunting to do, and it's not going to be easy, and that kind of upsets me. But that's what challenges are for, right? All right. Um, another format I do on my stream is the music formats. Here you can see a picture of the Alasis Vortex guitar. And this is a guitar that I bought it years ago, never got it working, and pulled it out of storage. And uh, a couple days before my, the video card died on my desktop, I actually managed to get the Alasis working through the desktop. The uh, this this guitar has no onboard sound. It it's basically a MIDI controller that plays through computer software. Um, the problem is, even though I installed it on the desktop, I um could not um I didn't I don't remember the name of the software, so I can't go back and then and install it on the laptop as well. So the guitar you won't be seeing on stream until after I get the desktop back. Um, I also do the live piano practices. You've seen that on my stream a couple times as live piano practice. Um, those I actually always do from the laptop because those I actually have to set up the stream studio for on the other side of my room. Um, I cannot bring my desktop next to my pianos. They're on opposite sides of the room. So I've always done those from the laptop. But after the last piano stream, or I think I've done two towards the end, my audio setup on the stream studio is really out of balance for getting the piano to sound right. So until I have some time to do a technical test with uh, some technical minded friends of mine, it's uh, the piano streams are going to have an issue being returned. Also, I. Also, my music area has a lot of stuff being temporarily stored back there. So um, I got to clear some of that out in order to even get to one of the pianos. The other thing I wanted to do, um, and I still want to do, is maybe stream some uh, live guitar practices. I have a nice guitar. I've been trying to self-teach off and on for a few years. I'm not that good at it. I'm worse at guitar than I am at piano. But I do want to try doing that on stream if I can. More than likely, that will also have to be from the laptop because of the wide webcam angles that I would need for setting that up. We'll see. It might be the kind of thing where I might need to do it from with both computers, um, where I have the where I have tabs on one computer and my studio on the other, or. Or the one computer should be enough with tabs on one screen and the studio on the other. I haven't really worked out how I'm going to do guitar, but I want to do it. And I also have percussion, but I probably, not drum set, I was never good at drum set. But I have some, uh, I have a couple of different um, orchestral and ethnic uh, percussion. I may not do a stream where it's just I may not do a stream where it's just percussion just because Twitch music rules and you can't put you can't do backing tracks and all that and with percussion what I what I would want to do is I would like want to play a song and play my own beat to it but and that's that's how I used to play around with the percussion is I would actually be listening to music and then I would pick up one of my instruments and play along with a beat with a made up beat that sounded good with that song, but until Twitch figures out, until I figure out how to do backing tracks on Twitch legally, um, there may not, 
I may not do percussion on, on stream unless I'm otherwise doing a music stream with like the piano or the guitar and I decide to take a brief interlude and show them off that might be a thing and the other thing I do with the uh, music is the kazoo and you've seen a few of my kazoo strings I do I do a I do something called a kazoo school which is where I play all the songs from a show top to bottom on solo kazoo I've done a couple of those. I have plans for more. And I'm actually doing one at the end of this stream as a l little treat for you guys who are into my kazoo shows. And for those of you who are not, that's okay too. Um, in addition to kazoo schools, I also want to do kazoo request nights. So I'm actually working on a song request spot. <coughs> but I think I want to dump the list I've made and start over uh, just because. I started that list like three months ago or like five months ago now. Haven't worked on it. Haven't practiced any of the songs I put there. So I think I want to be, I want to redo my kazoo song list. And so that's something I'm going to do before kazoo request night. But I'll also probably do kazoo theme nights if I don't want to do, say, a whole show. Like maybe one day I'll do Kazoo Disney Night or something. I don't know. There's a lot of things I can do in the music category. Still more formats to cover, so let's talk about the next one. Ah, uh, yes, the Retro Nintendo. And before I am. Um, so uh, with. Uh, I have emulators for the Game Boy, the N64, and the SNES, uh, the consoles from when I was uh, a kid, basically. And I've actually done some successful Game Boy streams. I did a Game Boy sampler stream, which I followed up with playing through one of the Game Boy games uh, over a series. Um, I have also have uh, games for the N64, but I haven't tested out which ones work yet haven't figured out the controllers so uh, not ready to stream N64 yet and the SNES emulator I haven't downloaded games for so that one is not ready yet either but I want to do more with the Nintendo this year particularly the Game Boy because I always had more games for the Game Boy than for either of the consoles one game I want to showcase is uh, Dragon Warrior Monsters maybe we'll do some of the uh, Pokemon Pinball um, there's a lot of cool games on the Game Boy that I want to revisit. Maybe, oh, you know what might be fun is the uh, Game Boy version of Heroes of Might and Magic. Uh, Heroes of Might and Magic was a game that I first became acquainted with, with one of the PC versions, and it was really fun, and uh, it might be fun to revisit that on the Game Boy version, just because the Game Boy version was the only version I actually had the PC version. I had played a couple times at a friend's house. Um, Soul Calibur. In addition to Morrowind, Soul Calibur 6 was the other computer game that I prominently featured on my stream. I shouldn't say prominently, I really only did it a relative few times. Um, mostly what I did with Soul Calibur 6 was exhibition fights. Uh, with random CPU fights to basically show off different characters. But one thing I want to maybe try is I want to maybe try to actually learn how to play the game and maybe play through the campaign mode. And one thing I one thing I've wanted to do since the beginning of Soul Calibur is do um do a stream where we make we make some fighters with viewer participation in the chat where chat helps me design and create a character rather than one person creating a character we group make a character I, I did it once with a couple friends it was a really fun experience the character came out look came out interesting uh, so I definitely want to do uh, more chat based characters in the creator character and again, maybe we'll do the uh, story mode. Maybe I'll learn how to play and we'll do actually try the story mode. There's a lot of things we can do with Soul Calibur. And we'll continue to have uh, 
we'll continue to have the exhibition CPU fights, both with re regular characters and with uh, created characters. We'll have the uh, we'll I still have to finish uh, the princess characters, but my interpretations of the princess. And then there were the skeleton characters that I spontaneously created for Halloween. That was a fun trip. Maybe we'll do the uh, maybe we'll do the skeleton uh, skeleton versus princess twin matches as a show. I think that might be fun to watch. Okay. Um, Viewer participation games. This is a big one that I want to do on the stream. I've always wanted the viewers to be a part of my show, and so I've wanted to make viewer participation games regular. That hasn't really worked out on account of the fact that um, in order to actually plan a viewer participation night, I need to make sure that there's going to be at least one person in chat before I actually start. And so that's my brother, and he doesn't really have time for regular game streams. So we'll have to figure out his schedule so that we can do viewer participation more regularly. The um, I know it says Jackbox here. That's the uh, viewer part. That's one of the viewer participation game series that I really want to do on stream. I don't have it yet. It's expensive. And like I mentioned with the Bakugan, no money right now. But we'll work up to Jackbox. I definitely want to be getting Jackbox going sooner rather than later, if at all possible. But in addition to Jackbox, other things we do on stream, there's a game called Stream Racer with little race cars. Um, there's a game called uh, City Guesser. We play uh, That's one of my favorite viewer participation games. Basically, it's a video of someone walking around a city street and you have to figure out where in the world they are. Pretty fun game. Probably one of the things that I'm going to be trying to test during the live testing portion of the stream later. Um, in addition to that, viewer participation. My plans for viewer participation started way back with Marbles on Stream, which is probably the most popular viewer participation game. Unfortunately, um, after I had streamed it twice, they released an update last year, and the update changed the video engine, and the video engine, the new video engine, doesn't support my desktop anymore, and so marbles will never run again on my desktop, period. I've contacted support about that. There's nothing we can do about that. Um, the laptop, the... Uh, new video engine also hated the laptop, but the laptop is a newer operating system, so maybe. Um, when I was playing around in Steam a couple weeks ago, it pushed an update for marbles, so I'm really hoping that that update, they fixed whatever it was that was preventing um, the game from working on the laptop, and I have hope that we might actually be able to start doing marbles on stream again. But if uh, if we do marbles, those streams will have to be from the laptop, not from the desktop. But if it works, then I'll gladly make it work because I definitely want to bring marbles back to the point that I was so upset about it not working on either computer and not being able to stream it myself. I actually stopped going to other people's marble streams because I was too upset about the whole deal. But if we can get marbles to come back on my laptop, then maybe, maybe I'll be able to start watching other people's marble streams and participating again. We'll see what happens with that. But that's just one of many. We all, like I said, I'm working. F I'm working on trying to uh, raise the money for Jackbox. My favorite Jackbox minigame is the t-shirt game. There was actually a time when you could, uh, when the game first released a few years ago, you could actually go to a certain website after your game and buy the t-shirts that had been designed during that game. I don't know if they still offer that feature though, but there's um, Jackbox, City Guesser. Well, there's also the possibility of playing um, games on Board Game Arena. That isn't going to be 
completely of your participation. Well, it will be, but with limitations because there's limited numbers of players. But we have to see if board game arena even is feasible. And it might be feasible for some games, but not other games, depending on how much of the interface I can chop off in the stream window. Because obviously the game doesn't work if all the other players can see my hand of cards for certain games where it's blind hands, you know what I mean? But there's a lot of things to consider with viewer participation games, so it's definitely a format that I'm going to be trying to do more this year. Building streams. Where to begin with building streams? So obviously anything involving building on the desk, building on the tabletop, like real Legos, well, like I said, no money, so no real Legos. So real building is pretty much out right now. And even if I did have money, probably wouldn't want to do much with real Legos just because once you build them, they're, take, um, they're nice to look at, they're nice to display and play with, but they take up a lot of space, and I don't really have space for Legos. So even if I had the money, it would not be a good idea to do a uh, regular tabletop building streams. But there's this wonderful program called Lego Digital Designer screenshot you can see here. That's not my build, by the way. I got that off of Google Images. But in Lego Digital Designer, it allows me to build Lego sets without taking up, taking up any space on my table. So I think Lego Digital Designer is how I'm going to do most building stream, streams. But that doesn't stop me from the possibility of doing a few small Lego sets once in a while, once I have money, or maybe doing uh, medium-sized uh, jigsaw puzzles or 3D puzzles, yeah, maybe a few of those wood kits. There's a lot of things that I can do besides Lego. But Lego will mostly be limited to Lego Digital Designer. But I'll probably do it a different way than I did with Brandenburg Gate, where instead of pulling all the pieces before the stream, I'll probably just put in one copy of each piece that's used from the list, you know, in the back of the instructions where it tells you all the pieces that are in the build. Bring in one copy and just use the clone, t clone tool as I need them, and then delete the toolbox area at the conclusion of the build. That might be something that I do. I'll probably, I'll probably do some kind of... Now, in LEGO Digital Designer, probably not going to do any of the really big, spectacular, huge sets, just because those streams will be hours or two-parters, and I mean, and it's going to be messy dealing with the toolbox, but like small to medium to large, just not huge or extra, I mean, there's, there's a lot of sets I want to try and build virtually. And I think it might work nicely once we pull that off. Um, retro educational games. Uh, DOS, three, Windows 3.1 era. Basically, the uh, educational computer games, when I was first exposed to a computer as a little kid, Eagle Eye Mysteries in London is one example. It's about a brother and sister who go to visit their cousin in England, <coughs> and they solve mysteries around London. And it was a fun little mystery game. Uh, there's uh, 50 mysteries in the game. So I'm thinking I might do it in a series of 10 episodes of five mysteries each, just so that the uh, streams aren't too terribly long. Yeah, I think it'll be 10 episodes of five each. But we, um, that's one of the games I want to try and play. There's actually precedent for these uh, retro educational games on my stream. I did a uh, Museum Madness speed run. That was actually my last stream before hiatus. So I played the entire Museum Madness game in a single session. And other, there, I've uh, also started looking at some of the other games. And not just, not just educational games, but there's a few other games from that era that I've also found. Basically, a lot of these DOS and 3.1 era games, you can actually uh, find websites where there's a DOS emulator in the browser itself. So I don't have to worry about configuration or installation or anything. All I have to do is find the sites that have the games and I'll be able to play them. Um, 
uh, Eagle Eye Mysteries in London, that that series is going to wait till I'm back on the desktop because uh, when you go through the browser emulators, the save game is per browser cookies, I think. It's saved in browser cookies. So if I sw switch back to the other computer after playing some mysteries I'm gonna on the laptop, I'm going to lose them. So I won't this game I probably can't do till I go back to the desktop. Some of the others that I may that um, are not as sequential that I can maybe do like one-offs of. I also attempted to play one of those games, Dino Park Tycoon, and not so great. You can watch the recap on my. I mean, you can watch the vod on my YouTube channel. It was Dino Park Tycoon hates its players. They said it was made for kids, but I really don't believe that because the frustration factor in that game is so horribly high as to make the game virtually unplayable. You'll see what I mean if you watch that episode. Um, there's a few other non-educational games from that era that I've been able to find in the browser as well. Um, still trying to find a few of the games I like from that era. But for right now, I've found a lot of them. Gizmos and Gadgets and a couple of the, of the other Super Solver ones I think I'm going to want to try and play on stream. Gizmos and Gadgets is fun. You run around a factory um, trying to find parts for vehicles so you can beat the evil scientist in a race. And there's uh, 15 vehicles to build across three categories. And you have to solve science puzzles to open the doors. And you have to run away from the monkeys who try and steal your parts. It's it's a fun game. Um, I, this is kind of uh, one of the themes I've been... Uh, working on setting up more recently. Oh, and don't get me started on, on all the various typing games. Uh, back in the 90s, typing games were all the rage. There was even a uh, House of the Dead typing game spinoff and a uh, Mar Super Mario typing. Mario Teaches Typing, which was basically a Mario adventure where instead of controlling him on the D-pad on a Nintendo, you're controlling him by typing letters on a computer keyboard. It's a uh, Super Mario's. Uh, I mean, Mario teaches typing. Probably one of one of the more interesting typing games out there. But I definitely want to try uh, typing of the dead on stream sooner rather than later. It might be a thing I do in the next couple weeks. That's probably going to be a one-off though. I'm not really into zombie shooters. And the last format I want to talk about, the last major format on my channel, is P Pokemon cards. But I don't talk about the cards and what they do in the game, and I don't go into Pokemon trading card game online like so many other streamers do. Um, most of the Pokemon uh, streamers, they spend a lot of time in Pokemon trading card online. I don't really do that. What I do is I have scans of all my Pokemon cards. I put them in an image randomizer and then a random card image pops up and I uh, and I talk about the card art of that card. And some of them have uh, collection stories attached to them. Not all of them. Um, but I, I like to talk about the art of the card because the art is a feature of Pokemon cards that is often overlooked. Everyone talks about what the card does in the game and all that, and maybe what the Pokemon does in the anime, but nobody really talks about the card arts, so that's where I come in, because it's like every... My, uh, my box of Pokemon card binders, where I have all my cards carefully sorted by uh, generation... Not generation of cards, generation of of Pokemon characters. So I have a Gen 1 book which has all the Gen 1 Pokemon regardless of which generation the cards were released in. And within that book there's a page, there's a page for each Pokemon. And of course the Eevees and all the Evolutions have their own special dedicated book which I'll actually be upgrading the book soon because I just found out that that book is quickly running out of space. And I've also learned that there's like 50 ultra rare evolutions 
that I don't have in that book yet, and it makes me sad that I have no money because I used to um, I used to really enjoy having a complete evolution collection. And then they decided to drop like 50 evolutions at once, and I went to TCG Player and added them all up, and it's like something like fifteen hundred dollars to get the EV book finished now. Who has that kind of money? And it's making me sad, but I'll figure it out. Oh, I want to try and get that EV book finished. Hopefully, I want to get it up to date. Hopefully, before Generation Nine drops. And this is the third year of. We've just gone into the third year of Generation Eight cards, believe it or not. So that means next year the Generation Nine cards might start dropping. Unless Pokemon decides to slow down a bit. It's been every three years. But I'm, I'm hoping to get the Eevee book up to date before Generation 9 st starts dropping. And also get my upgraded book. And the other thing, in addition to Pokemon cards, I did one episode where I talked about random vintage Magic the Gathering. By vintage, I mean when the game debuted in 93 up to... The last set before the border change in 2002. So vintage I define as anything on the original border. Uh, there's been uh, three different border changes throughout history uh, in Magic. Vintage is really where um, the card arts are that I prepared. Just, there's just so many thousands of Magic cards that um, for doing the card art discussion format, it's, it's better to pick a theme. And so for my theme, I chose Vintage 93 to 2002. And then in the middle of 2002, with uh, the release of Mirrodin, they, the original Mirrodin, they started the uh, second frame. And then a few years ago, was it Tarkir? It may have been Tarkir. I might be mistaken on that. I don't remember exactly where. But then they uh, revised the frame again to the third version of the card frame. But I I refer to vintage as anything with that original frame. So yeah, there will be uh, definitely more episodes of Magic Vintage card art as well. I have to rebuild my folder of those, so it might be a few months before those start appearing. Although I think I might have a backup of that folder on the desktop. I deleted that folder by accident from my hard drive, but I think the desktop has a backup of that folder. So I'll have to go back and check that once I get the desktop back. And hmm. so that's what's going on with each of the individual formats on my stream. Give me a moment and let me uh, get ready to start the technical tests. Give me a moment. I need to respond to a text real quick. And I've noticed before um, my streams went anywhere from half hour to three hours. I think I think I want to try to I think I, I think I'm going to on average try to try to do the uh, hour and a half to three hour time frame like unless I need to do something really quickly or maybe if I need to um, or maybe if I want to run longer if I'm having a special event. One thing I definitely want to do more of on the stream is Disney and Star Wars content. There hasn't really been much of that. Um, so yeah, I'm waiting for the... My brother said he would be coming along to uh, join the chat so I can run these tech tests. I'm waiting to see if he actually shows up or not. I guess in the meantime, I could maybe uh, 
No, you don't, guys definitely don't want to hear me sing. But that's something I forgot to mention in music. I'm thinking about doing singing practice on stream because I sing poorly, but I found that whenever I take the time to practice, I get better for a while and then I lax back into singing poorly. So I kind of want to sing on practice on stream, but that's uh, probably a train wreck waiting to happen, but it's still something I want to start tr I want to try a couple times. Um, let's see, oh, that's an old, old frame from the one time I did a board game stream, it was Star Wars Trivial Pursuit, interesting, on the laptop, yeah, uh, there's really, yeah, some of these old frames that I don't use anymore. And I don't really use the face cam because I've got bad acne right now. My acne has been in a bad cycle for an extended time. That's why I haven't really been using the face cam. Give me one moment. Let me find out what's going on with him. No response. And I don't just want to go into City Guesser and join a random game because I found that that's not enjoyable. Because you can go to City Guesser and join a random game, <laughs> but if you do that, then you wind up in a game in the middle of a game where they've already played several rounds, they have no way of catching up, or you'll end up in a game where they have it set for thirty second to one minute rounds, and I I always play the two minute rounds, but. It's basically unplayable if you do go to join game because you have no idea what you're getting into. Um, City Guesser is not a thing. Um, tell you what, since I have no idea what's going on with him, I'm going to go ahead and show you a game I've been playing. called Flycourt. This is not a game I was going to do on stream, at least not until I got the desktop, but let me give you a little bit of a preview. Alright, we're going to just go into free play. We'll start something in a little bit. I just tried to call him. No response. He promised he would be here. So I'm going to stall out. I'm going to play Flycorp for like a few minutes, 15 to 20, just to show you. The thing with Flycorp is I can't do a full run from the laptop because this is a game that it gets very laggy after I've added about half the countries and it becomes laggy to the point of being unplayable. So I want to wait till I go back to the desktop to do this on stream for real. But let's go ahead and let's start with, ooh, let's not start with Africa because Africa, you have random country closures for disease. Italy or Japan. I'll tell you what, let's do something really, really stupid. <laughs> and do a Japan, a Japan, Italy network. <laughs> or actually, let's just build Japan and the Koreas is kind of a little demo. So you want to connect up. You don't ever want to have a disconnected city because then it'll start filling up. 
for some reason, uh, I did that by accident. For some reason, they've made it so that the moment a city appears, it starts generating passengers, whether it's connected or not. And that can be a problem. So I'm just giving you a little taste while we wait to see if he responds. And of course, they're going to knock out one of my cities for a few minutes right at the beginning when I have no when I have slow money gain gain. But it seems to be okay because Japan is actually one of the uh, better cities to start with in terms of money generation, I think. I'm saying that from limited experience. If he doesn't return to me by the time I finish building Japan and Korea, then we'll go, I'll go ahead and show you something tomorrow. Because I haven't streamed in a while. I can keep this party going for a while. I don't talk as much when I play Fly Corp because a lot of the early game involves concentration. So yeah, you want to optimize airports and planes and make your network good. You don't want any of the cities to fill up because you you get a penalty for full cities. The way I generally do it is I do the capitals as hubs. Sometimes I have to create secondary hubs when the country is bigger or has too many cities.
Hmm. No response and he ignored my phone call. That's not a good sign. We're still going to do the technical test in Morrowind. Um, I don't know how I'm going to test marbles because I absolutely need uh, somebody in chat in order to be able to properly test marbles. I guess I'll try loading up the program and see what happens if I enter the chat command, but it won't let me start the race, so what good is testing it? But the crash before was when we entered the join command, so maybe. How many cities do we have? Seventeen. I will try to do the test without somebody in chat. Is there anyone in chat right now? Because I cannot do a technical test on marbles, I don't think, unless I have somebody other than myself with which to test. That was the whole point of my brother agreeing to be here today was that I needed somebody in chat. Well, we'll do it on the fly and see what happens. I think Japan's almost done with cities. I generally take these planes and airports a little bit higher, but this is just a demo game I'm doing for you. Actually, let's end it there. That's a little taste of Fly Corp. He's not there, so let's let's see what happens if I try to run marbles. Sorry, screen's dark a little bit. Oh, and I. Hey, I gotta put in a category. Screw it, we'll just stay in just chatting. We are doing technical testing right now. My stream appears to have frozen. Hold on. Should be showing a black screen right now. I have nothing set in the studio turned on right now. So that was a little taste of Flycorp. Something I want to stream once I go back to the desktop.
Hmm. Let's see if I can get it to come up. Oof. Trying to fix it here. All right, Marbles is trying to load. I don't know if it will or not. But that's the reason why I decided to roll in some, part of the reason I decided to roll in some technical testing here is because, uh, well, uh, I felt it was better to do it on a day where I was talking about behind the scenes anyway. Well, it's not a big surprise if Marbles doesn't load because, hey, that's how it generally behaves anyway. Let's try stopping it and starting it again. I thought it would be a good idea to try just because, you know, it pushed an update recently. Uh, I thought maybe the update would have fixed things. It's not, of course, it's not responding to my quick command. Hold on. I'm going to force crash marbles and start over. Again, you still shouldn't be seeing anything on screen yet. We're talking, you know what? Here, now I can see something on screen. Let me see if it actually loads this next time. All right, it finally forced quit itself. Okay. Well, the program went away. Oh, I did discover that one of the games that's available in the browser, in the browser emulator, is the original Myst. So my plan to have uh, my, my my plan to do a a stream for my fifty follower special for. More for missed in one session, it's a go. We're going to try marbles one more time and see if it loads. But that was a crash on startup, so I don't think they fixed the issue yet. Which would suck, which means I'm still boycotting them. If I can't stream marbles, then I don't want to help other people play marbles either. Sorry if I'm grumpy like that, that's just how it is. This is the game that made me want to do viewer participation games. Okay, so we get the splash screen. We get the uh, seizure warning. Hey! Q caller showed up. Hey, hi Q caller. So, um, trying to load marbles right now, and it looks like uh, it, it looks like it's still crash prone. And now it's actually, I've just tried twice. Before it was crashing when you got to this. Oh wait, never mind. We're at the menu now. Uh. Let me make sure I'm connected to my stream. Uh, okay, connecting to my stream. It's loading. So I'm at the uh, I'm at the marbles I'm at the marbles window right now. The main it actually loaded the title menu, which is as far as I got last time. So let me connect it to my Twitch. And then we will see what happens. Oh. 
let me, uh, let me, there we go. That's what you can see right now. And it's telling me to log into my Twitch. I entered my login info, and now it says I have to go into my email for a verification. So Q, um, now you're just here for a bit. I actually may make this party go a little bit longer than I was planning and test a couple more games on here just because, but uh, I won't need you for most of them. I haven't streamed in so long and I'm actually rather enjoying have being live, even if it's even if there's not much content going on. Sometimes you just got to have casual, make it up as you go kind of streams, which I do sometimes. I like going in with a plan. I'm still going to do some Morrowind tonight, and I'm still going to finish with my Kazusical. All right, let me see if it takes. Redirect. Marbles is logged in. Settings. I'll play around with balls later. Hey, if I wanted to do Bakugan, that would, that, yeah. I said I would play with balls later, and I do Bakugan on the stream sometimes, but I know it's getting late. My camera goes when it gets late. How do I get back to where I was? We're just gonna pick random. All right, let's see what happens. We're actually going into a race screen. I don't remember the controls or anything. It's called Cosmic Chaos. All right, Q, type exclamation point play. You're going to be the guinea pig here. P type ex exclamation point play and let's see if you kill my stream or not. While we wait for Q to try to crash my game here, exclamation point play. I want to see what happens when a viewer does it. We're not going to test City Guesser or Board Game Arena tonight because uh, uh, those involve playing with a browser, and I already know City Guesser pretty much works. Um, Hmm. It's not doing anything if I try to navigate the camera. What happens if I type exclamation point play? And it also looks like the animation is going pretty laggy as well. A marble entered. The animation stopped, though. 
and I couldn't control I couldn't control the camera view. Is it in the process of crashing? Let's see what happens. Hmm. It's not doing anything. Spinning circle. I think it's still broken. I think marbles is still a no-go for this computer. Wait. It just crashed out. It just crashed out. All right. I'll try a full uninstall and reinstall with the update later, and I'll try it again another day. But marbles is still a no-go for right now. We just completely crashed out again. So yeah. All right, Q, if, if you don't want to stay, that was really the test that I needed you for. I'm going to go ahead and bring up some Morrowind, and then I'm going to test one or two of the browser-based games while I'm at it. But we are... We are not playing, we are not testing marbles because it, no, it still doesn't work. All right. Morrowind. But first. Why is my video not showing, not showing the splash screen? Why is it still showing the crashed marble screen? Q, there's nothing to play against. The game already crashed when I entered my marble. Sorry about that. Uh, but what I want to know is why the screen didn't switch back. I'm trying to switch around different pictures here, but it looks like my playback is still stuck on the screen, even though I've moved the OBS. Let me try force crashing and resuming the OBS. It looks like my OB my uh, OBS is locked up. We'll have like a two minute lagged, we'll have like a two minute disconnect time for me to bring the OBS back up. I'm force crashing now. All right, it looks like the stream might be coming back up. All right, that's where I am right now. Okay, I, I think I see where the issue is. Hmm. Yeah, fudge, okay. Yeah, the OBS is not broadcasting studio changes to the Twitch. Q, there's nothing to play against the game or Yeah, Q, you may you may go to bed. I'm just trying to figure out. And it seems my live got to like five minutes lag, and that's why it's Yeah. I'm not sure what's going on here. But yeah, as soon as I can get the uh my playback to catch up to my OBS. I'm going to play around with a few more things on my own. Thank you for helping me out with the marbles test. 
I'm still sad about it, still boycotting it. Hopefully the next update, I'll be back online with that. I'll talk to you tomorrow, okay? Did you start uh, Boba Fett, by the way? All right, I know there's a lot of dead space in here while I'm trying out different things here. Oh yeah, for some reason, my playback screen is choosing to be like five minutes behind and that's not good. So I think I can't really test anything that involves other players anymore tonight anyway. So, um, Morrowind it is, I guess. And I've been trying to optimize the Morrowind setup to run a little bit better on the laptop. It's very laggy on the laptop, probably because of distant draw and the reduced memory of my laptop and all that. I'm trying to find the balance between enough distant draw that Flight Simulator looks good, but not so much distant draw that uh, the game is laggy to the point of unplayability which is kind of what I've been experiencing lately. So I think for Morrowind, I think we're just going to do For Morrowind, I think we're going to just do some random testing things. And it doesn't want to align with my uh, player for some reason. Let's see how this looks when the game comes up. And when this is, when this is done, I'm going to test one or two of the uh, browser-based games as well. I'm waiting. All right, yeah, you can't see anything. I forgot about that. And I turned off character creation for for now just just cuz I haven't done anything beyond text testing. Yeah, looks like the stream play playback is still quite a few minutes behind. We're going to fly the other way today. We're not going to go to Elmalexia. Well, Elmalexia is still probably the best place for testing the damn thing. Sorry, language. And I won't show you the character like I usually do because it's the generic ugly guy character. Basically the default if you pick the first option in every character select menu. And I put on the flight ring prematurely just so I won't have to go back into the menu, but that might have been a mistake, but we got outside. And of course we exit right into rain.
We may not have to go to Amalexia to test the lag if the rain is already like this. And you can already see that the rain has pretty much lagged out the game. Distant land is already a lot smaller than I like. But with this rain, we're not going anywhere. Let's try new distance. Let's take it down there. OK. I'll, that's passable, but still quite laggy in the rain. This little flight over Old Even Heart is very laggy. It looks like the rain stopped is or is stopping. The rain is slowing down at least. Yeah. We're still laggy enough to be annoying. Actually, that's old even heart right there. I don't know what I was saying. <sighs> Yeah, even at six cell distance. And look, flight simulator mode is no fun at all. You can see we can't really see we're too much ahead of us anymore. What if, but it's still too laggy. What if I go down? Four and a half cells, maybe? Is that playable? Uh, the rain. All right, fly back over. Where? Hold even. We're getting motion. Okay. Still choppy, but if I take it down anymore, we can already hardly see where we're going. So if I take it down anymore, then it'll just make Flight Simulator unplayable. We've got motion. I don't want to take it down anymore. I already can't see as far as I'm comfortable with. So Remember, on the desktop, we can go like 8, 10 cells out before we hit this amount of lagginess. It'll be nice to get the desktop back. So I think the goal right now is to see. We're not going to fly all the way out to Necrom. That'll just be a waste of time since we're just doing technical testing tonight. But what I will do is I'll fly out to Almalexia if I can remember where it is. Almalexia being an incomplete area is totally unoptimized. And even though there's no NPCs and no interiors or anything like that, it's still heavy laggy in Almalexia. And I think we're getting close. Uh, yeah, we're, we've hit the city. You can even see, even at this pathetic view distance, from which we can't see the whole city, even see the whole city at once, where we got lag. So, yeah, I recommend not going to Almalexia if you um, are on a lower end machine.
you can't do anything in Almalexia anyway. <laughs> Let's just fly up a little bit and just see how much of the city we can actually see. Yeah, you can already see the fog is get coming around the edges. So we can't even see the whole city with this short view distance. All right, let's fly away. Let's fly back to Varnfell, shall we? We'll take the scenic route past Vivek and we'll head up and see if we can fly into Balmora because there's something out of place in Balmora, if I remember correctly. Crest Shop Murder Run, maybe? Considering how frustrating the technical tests have been tonight, I'm almost considering a Dress Shop Murder Run. But you can see the distance is, the view distance is so low now. I can't even see Varnfell from here, which is bad because I'm not used, I mean, obviously I play the game for a long time with like no view in front of me, but that was also before I discovered how to build uh, cheat utilities. I haven't played with this little with this little amount of distance view in so long. But then again, most of the time when I play, I'm not really doing flight simulator except when I want to go somewhere. Most of the time I'm just running around a little bit. I got to figure out where I am in terms of I came up too far east, I think. Yep, there's Vivek right there. And you know what? Screw this flight simulator. On the ground, not being able to see far doesn't matter as much because your view will be blocked by hills and valleys anyway. But here, view matters. Let's just find our way to the foreign quarter and catch a silt strider to Balmora. Or I can even go inside the foreign quarter and catch a mage teleport to Balmora. Either way, I want to go to Balmora right now. And have you ever noticed how much Balmora, Morrowind sounds like Baltimore, Maryland. Weird, huh? I'm done with trying to make flying work. Why walk when you can run? All right, Balmora is loading. Why uh, walk when you can run? And do you see anything out of place in Balmora? Specifically, why is there a big McDonald's signpost in the middle of Morrowind? <laughs> that certainly doesn't belong there, does it? My time is precious. So much. Yep, that's a mod. Hello. And see, when we're inside the city. You just, it doesn't matter. Our view is blocked by those hills over there. But when we're flying around, it doesn't matter. McDagoths. Okay. So there's some McDagoth employee. And look, they sell a Mick hat. We're going to buy one of those. They also sell. Gonia Nuggets, the Big War, Big Red Mountain, Corpus Rib Sandwich, Moon Sugar Pie, Quarter Codget with Cheese, and a Skuma Shake. Okay. We're going to wear the hat. 
just because. And there's classic Dunmer fashion right there. <laughs> that doesn't even look like it's fit right, but whatever. Anyway. Christopher McDonald. This food sure does get made quick, right? Maybe Dagoth isn't that bad after all. <laughs> Generic NPC continuing the joke. And one more thing I want to check out while I'm over here. Boys are such easy. We want to go explore the river just outside of town a little bit, I think. I don't remember exactly where the thing is. But I think we want to be Well, now we're just running towards the fort. We don't want to go towards the fort. I came out on the wrong side of town, I think. Let's see. I'm just curious. Do I have the tent active on Leave this one? Did I do I have the tent mod turned on on this run? I do. You have a question? Yes. No, I want to come out on this side of the river, I think. All right, that's where I want to be is over there on the second bridge. We make a special trip just for I want to remember where this thing is before I actually do a stream with it, so bear with me a few more moments. Oh, it's somewhere near the city. Then again, I may not even have the mod turned on, in which case I won't be able to find it anyway. Is it the other end of the city? No, it's not the other end of the city. Uh, Is it back here, maybe? Oh, I do have it turned on. I found it. All right. See this castle? There's a couple dozen dress shops in here. There's also a shooting gallery, but the shooting gallery is likely to, to uh, get me a copyright strike, so we're not going to do that. Oh, this isn't the dress shop. I forgot about the lantern shop, but. All right. Uh, we could easily spend a whole evening and a half in this, in this mod, so let's not bother starting. Let's consider the Morrowin testing done for the day. What's the last thing I want to test before I go into my Kazoosical? All right, I'm just waiting for the game to close. And I'm just looking at the playback and boy, is it choppy. And I don't know how it got so many several, so many minutes behind. So clearly the playback is also lagging tonight. All right. Yeah. Shoot. No. 
out somewhere. Let's see. Then again, I may not even have the mod turned on. Yeah, playback somehow got like five minutes behind. I have no idea. So that's something I'll have to address as well. All right. Let me go over to my browser real quick and here, take a splash screen. What do I want to try to play? Oh, that's not the game I thought it was. Let's try here. So we're going to look at some of these older educational games I was talking about. Uh, that site doesn't have a game. We can't find the actual game. I'm looking for one of the games. I'm looking for one of the games that I wanted to do. Um, Okay, I can't seem to find that one. But you know what? I was telling you about Eagle Eye Mysteries in London. So if I can make, if I can find, I'm not going to play the first chapter. No, no. We're just going to play the tutorial level so I can show you that game I was telling you about. The emulator's launching. Meanwhile, let me come over here. Let me see what I can get going.
Bear with me a moment. Okay, where's settings? Looks like I have to actually have to make a character first. That's not what I wanted. So we're just going to play the tutorial. There we are. That's good enough. We got it. Welcome to London, Uncle Evie. You're just in time. Jennifer is on her way here with a special assignment from Scotland Yard. When you're through reading this, click your left mouse button to go on. Wow, meta. Broke the fourth wall there. He broke the fourth wall before it was cool. Remember, this is an old DOS game. As soon as Jennifer gets here, we'll go over the top secret new crime busting info that we'll use to get things done here in London. In the meantime, let me fill you in on the latest and show you around. This is that game I was telling you about when I was uh, mentioning the retro educational games. This was the uh, box art that there was the Eagle Eye Mysteries in London. Because I want to save the actual mysteries for a stream series, we're just gonna, I'm just going to show you the tutorial mystery. I'm Jake Eagle, of course, and this is the garret upstairs in the house my Aunt Miranda and Uncle Basil own in London. Basil. Such an English name. So many great English characters named Basil, and you never see that name in American literature. <laughs> My sister Jennifer and, our, and I are hanging out with them all summer. We plan to take a vacation from all the work we do back in Richview at our Eagle Eye Detective Agency, but it looks like mysteries just seem to pop up wherever we go. Luckily, Jennifer packed the Travis in her suitcase just in case. The text retrieval and visual, visual imaging system is our own electronic devices notebook. Basically, an iPad before iPads existed. Jennifer's even added a couple of cool new features to it, too. Here's how it works. When we're on a case, I'll enter all the clues we uncover into the Travis. When you want to check our notes, just click on the Travis. It will display all our notes for you to check over. That way, when we're finished investigating, we can use the clues to figure out who done it. If you need help figuring out how, how it works, just hit the button marked with a question mark and you'll get an explanation of its features. I've just put some notes in there to help us get around, which will be useless to solve the tutorial quiz, by the way. We'll catch up with Jennifer back here later. Let's go downstairs to the kitchen, and I'll introduce you to Aunt Miranda and Uncle Basil. Or, as he's just said, Aunt M and Uncle Baze. Whenever we go anywhere, we always start by checking out the map of London. You can tell which place we should head to first because that spot, spot will be marked with a flashing red diamond. Just click on that diamond and we're on our way. I really don't need to read all the game instructions, do I? Just the plot relevant mystery stuff. I guess I should get used to reading everything though. This is my Aunt Miranda and Uncle Basil. If you'd like to talk to them, click inside the glowing boxes that surround them, and they'll introduce themselves. When you're through talking to them, click on the box over the door to your left. Then we can head back up to the garret and see if Jennifer's back. 
Hello, Uncle Evie. Thrilled to make your acquaintance. I'm Jake's Uncle Basil. I must say, it's quite a relief to see that you're here to help out. We just seem to be surrounded by puzzles and mysteries here in London. As an author of mystery stories and other novels, I seem to come into contact with all sorts of strange problems. There are some terrific advantages to being a rather well-known author, if I do say so myself. One of those is that I've become quite chummy with Mr. Sneed, the head librarian at the British Museum's famous Br British Library. Not many people get access to those special libraries and all the facts and information they're in, but you will. Whenever you want to go research anything at the library, just click on the British Museum button on the map of London. Hello, Uncle. So, very pleased to meet you. Let's see, what can I tell you about myself? I'm Aunt Miranda. I work as an investigative reporter for the Times here in London, so I often get hot news tips that Jake and Jennifer can help me research. More often than not, there's a mystery to be solved. Fifty of those to be exact, plus this one. This one doesn't count towards the fifty. <coughs> in fact, I just got a call from my friend down at Scotland Yard, Inspector Gage. He's got just such a case. I'm not sure of the details, but it has something to do with the theft of a priceless Egyptian statue from the British Museum. Scotland Yard is London's official police headquarters. You and Jake can meet up with Inspector Gage there. He'll fill you in on the details. And somehow these two teenagers are better detectives than Scotland Yard. You'll see what I mean as we play through the series. Whenever you see your massacre sir, turn into a picture of me on the go, it means that it leads to another room or place. Let's go back to the garret. There's Jennifer now. She's my twin sister and about the coolest girl I've ever met. Wrong! Shane is the coolest girl we've ever met, but that's a story for another day. In terms of, uh, if you run your cursor over the glowing box around the notes next to her, you'll see it turn into a magnifying glass. Whenever you see, it, uh, whenever you see that, it means there's something there you can examine, like a note. When you're ready to leave here, click on the feet to go back to the kitchen and the map. Let's look at the note. This is the special assignment I was telling you about, Jake. Inspector Gage said this note was left at his office addressed to the Eagle Eye Detective Agency. Someone must have heard about us from our newspaper clippings in Richview. From what I could gather from Inspector Gage, last weekend someone stole a priceless ancient Egyptian statue of the cat goddess Bastet from the British Museum. Scotland Yard had no leads at all until this note arrived there this morning. It's our only clue. The note reads, Little cat statue come from the Nile, stayed at the British Museum a while. McCavity came to take it away and drop it at Covent Garden one day. <clears throat> all the little kitties lined up in a row, fake ones and real one, all ready to go. McCavity watched to see what was done. The head eater of beef, he claimed the true one. Only the cleverest of eagle eyes will find my special feline prize. If you find the answer to my poser, you'll get Kitty back, or else it's no, sir. McCavity is a recurring mystery character. They're not revealed until the, the very last 50th mystery. Poser, what's that? One of those British slang words? Luckily, we put together a little British-American dictionary in the back of the eagle eye handbook, a.k.a. the rule book. Old games used to come with those things. Uh, it's not there. See if we can find out what a poser is. It's the British term for riddle. Anytime you come across a strange British word that we don't understand, just grab the non-existent notebook and it'll be okay. <laughs> right, mate? I know that one. Mate is what British people call their buddies. I can't wait to get back to the States to try these new words out on my mates. <laughs> Well, this poser's got me stumped. Remember, if you're stumped when you're trying to solve a mystery, just click on the uh, Travis and a uh, hint, and we got to go to Scotland Yard. I've typed some of this poem into the Travis so we can check it again if we need to. Uh, notes, finished reading, go back to the map. Uncle, great to see you. I've got to fill you in on the latest in Eagle Eye operations. Here's the scoop, and don't worry if you don't catch it the first time. Jake will type it for you so you can check it anytime you want. First off, the map of London has some neat extras. 
When you can go to a new site, a glowing diamond will appear over that spot. When you click on the area near that diamond, you'll zoom into a closer view and the site marker will be there to click on. When you've examined everything in a site and there's nothing more to check out, that diamond will stop glowing. You can still go back there and review what you've seen. Review what you've seen. But keep an eye, sometimes as the mysteries get tougher, new evidence comes up in an old site and a diamond might start glowing again. That means we have to go back and see what new stuff is happening there. Here in England, lots of places have bunches of different rooms in them, like the Garrett here at uh, Aunt Miranda and Uncle Basil's place. Remember to check out those rooms really carefully so you don't miss any clues. To solve a mystery, you'll still need to read all the clues and figure out which clues really prove which suspect is the most likely to be guilty. You can always pick up to five clues to solve a mystery, but if you think you can prove your case in fewer than that, select two to four clues you think you'll do it. If those clues solve the case by themselves, you'll get to pick the suspect. Don't be hasty. A good eagle eye detective always reads all the case notes and chooses the clues carefully. Sometimes we'll need to solve puzzles too or read the map and get the right compass directions. Jake and I have packed all the stuff we need into the Eagle Eye Handbook, again, non-existent. So when those situations come up, I guess we'll just figure it out. Make sure we hang on to it in the maps. I'll see if there's a PDF of the rule book somewhere online. I'm sure there's got to be. That's your guess around town. Okay, good luck, Uncle. We're going back to the map of London. And now uh, options. We want to turn the sound off. We want the highlight boxes. And now we're going to Scotland Yard. That's Inspector Gage. Just click inside the glowing box to talk to him. Uh, yeah, more instructions. When you're ready to leave, click, uh, yeah, 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 we know all that. Hello there, this must be Uncle Evie. Miranda just rang up and told me all about you. We can certainly use your help today. I'm afraid that rascal McCavity is up to his or her old tricks again. Who is McCavity, Inspector Gage? If only we knew. I'm afraid that's just it. No one knows who he or she is. Every time we think we're close to catching the fiend, he or she simply isn't there. So, f so far the pranks are annoying, but mostly harmless. Um, for example, last year on April Fool's Day, McCavity somehow introduced a computer virus into the police databanks. The machines were spouting that ridiculous poem for three days. Which poem are you talking about, Inspector? It's from T.S. Eliot's Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats. You know the one that inspired that popular musical Cats. I bet you can find copy of it round at the British Library. So yeah, this game just dated one of the best musicals ever. Because, yeah, this game's old. <laughs> it seems that McCavity's latest trick was stealing the statue of the Egyptian goddess Bastet from the British Museum. The note I gave to Jennifer suggests that the statue was placed amongst a group of souvenirs at Covent Garden yesterday. They were supposed to be simple copies of the Bastet statue, worthless souvenirs really, but according to this note, McCavity somehow replaced one of the fakes with a genuine ancient Egyptian statue. Now some innocent shopper has a priceless Egyptian artifact gathering dust on his or her mantelpiece. We must find the person who purchased the statue and return Bastet to the British Museum. Inspector Gage's file on the case lists the possible owners of the priceless original statue. According to Covent Garden sales records, only three people purchased statues of Bastet at the market. The buyers were Mr. Hargreaves of the Tower of London, Mrs. Moddy from Warwick Castle, and Nigel Eagle of South Kensington. Nigel Eagle! That's my cousin. He's supposed to be at Covent Garden today with his friend Gay. All right. Things are going on. This is where we actually stop reading instructions and start reading mystery. So now a whole bunch of places we have to visit. Victoria Station. Which means we have to go to Warwick Castle. From Victoria Station, we can take the train to all kinds of places in England. You can tell where we can go today by checking the schedule board. 
Warwick is highlighted. Click the name on the schedule and we're on our way. <coughs> Let's go to Warwick. The video travel guide. Uh, that's this. It shows you a picture of the place and some educational information about it. We are not going to worry about that. Just going to be a waste of time for the mysteries because it doesn't actually give you any clues or anything. We're going to Warwick Castle. Warwick Castle is just one of the excellent places we'll get to visit during our stay in London. Check out the towers. When we're done investigating, yeah, go back to the station. And this is Mrs. Motti. Yes, I did purchase a statue at Covent Garden while I was visiting my sister in London yesterday. Working here at Warwick Castle as a tour guide, I get rather tired of looking at armor and swords and tapestries all day, so I try to decorate my home with sweet little knickknacks. The statue is a lovely little cat in the old Egyptian style. I'm terribly fond of animals, you see. In fact, I'm a vegetarian. A vegetarian, so you don't eat beef. Heavens no, I don't eat meat of any kind. All right. Let's head back to London. We've got other places to check out. What's all the way up here? Tower of London. We're going to the Tower of London. <laughs> This huge old castle near the Thames River is called the Tower of London. Its place is just packed with history. We learn something new each time we visit. Uh, yeah. This is Mr. Hargreaves. Wow, what a great costume. This is no costume, young lady. This is my u official uniform. Let me introduce myself. My name is Mr. Hargreaves, and I am the chief warder here at the Tower. All of the beef eaters, or Yalman warders, here at the Tower are under my command were all former officers of Her Majesty's Armed Forces with distinguished service records. So you're the head beef eater? You could say that. Anytime you come to visit the tower again, just ask for me and I'll be delighted to give you a tour. He seems like a pretty cool guy. But hey, head beef eater? We still got to get all the clues before it will let us solve the mystery, though. Let's go over to Covent Garden. Covent Garden is a great place to go shopping. We always find the coolest souvenirs here. Look, there's Nigel with his friends Gay and Dorothea. Let's ask him about the statue he bought yesterday. Uh, yeah. Nigel, hi Jake. Is this your friend Uncle Evie? Pleased to meet you. I'm Jake and Jennifer's cousin Nigel. What are we doing here today? Actually, we're, we're looking for you. We're trying to find out more about that cat statue you, you bought here yesterday. However, did you know about that? I was going to give it to my mate Gordon as a birthday present. He's just mad about anything Egyptian. When I saw it yesterday, I nearly dropped my fish and chips. It's a perfect thing for old Gordon. You were eating fish and chips as you shopped? Absolutely. I can't make it past the chippy on the corner without grabbing something to nosh. Makes my mouth water just thinking about it. I just brought Gay and Dorothea by to show them all the fab Egyptian goodies this fellow had for sale, but it seems he's closed up shop and gone off. Oh well. None of the booths at Covent Garden are selling any kind of cat statues or Egyptian souvenirs today. All right, one more place we got to check out, and then we can solve this tutorial mystery. And I think I am starting to get tired, so after that we'll do the kazoozical. We're going to the British Museum and we're going to meet Mr. Sneed. The British Museum is so unbelievably cool. It's got room after room of ancient treasures and art. Jennifer and I love the Egyptian room. It's full of mummies. The British Library is just one of the fantastic sections of the museum. The library has jillions of books and documents, and a lot of them are the original copies in the handwriting of the author. All right. Not a word. My powers of detection tell me that you are Jake Eagle and Uncle Evie. Well, how did you know that? 
elementary, my dear young sleuths. From your colonial accents and those garish clothes, I deduce you must be Americans. Your inquisitive looks lead me to believe you may be detectives. My newspaper archives from America contain stories of a pair of young investigators newly, arch newly arrived on our sceptered isle with those names precisely. With a genius IQ, little escapes my notice. And ahem, your Uncle Basil cl uh, called to say that you might pop by to do some research. Aha! If you'd like to find out more about the statue that was stolen from our museum, you'll need to look up information on Bastet, the Egyptian cat goddess. I've set aside some books for you over there. The library is a great place to check out all kinds of stuff. Let's see what this book has to say about that T.S. Eliot poem that Inspector Gage told us about. It says that T.S. Eliot was one of the greatest American poets. He mostly wrote serious poetry, but he did publish a book of funny children's poems called Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats. The book is full of poems about cats. It looks like McCavity took his name from the poem called McCavity the Mystery Cat. Here's a copy of it. You know what? I'm going to try and sing this because, hey, I love this musical. <coughs> the first stanza of the poem. McCavity's a mystery cat. He's called the Hidden Paw. For he's the master criminal who can defy the law. He's the bafflement of Scotland Yard, the flying squad's despair. For when they reach the scene of crime, McCavity's not there. Sorry, that was horrible. I know, I wasn't planning to sing. I forgot that little excerpt was there. That sure does describe Inspector Gage's crook, McCavity. One day when you have some time, you should check out all the rest of that poem at the library. It'll crack you up. Yeah, or you could just check out the musical and, and see all the cats. Here at the British Library, we have to do a lot of research for ourselves. Since we're trying to find out information on Bastet, we'll need to figure out which book has that information. Pick the book. English writers, Greek mythology, world history, British birds, world records, atlas. Let's go for the encyclopedia then. That's right, to find information on Bastet, we'll need to check the encyclopedia under B. That would be in the volume that has information from A to C. Do you remember those old school encyclopedias that took up a whole bookshelf and had like 20 volumes and were incredibly heavy? And uh, Yeah, it's been years since I've seen one of those. It's all online now, little tiny form factors that fit in the palm of your hand that are almost weightless. Amazing how far information storage has come, isn't it? The encyclopedia has an entry under B for Bastet. The cat goddess Bastet was worshipped by the ancient Egyptian people. She was supposed to bring good fortune and protect from evil. All cats were sacred to her, so priests of Bastet would take great care to feed the cats that frequented her temples. We actually have a cat that's been uh, living on our porch the past couple months. It, it guards our house. I mean, I've literally seen it in 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 that whole in that um, watchman pose that cats do. It's really adorable. And it follows me to the mailbox. I'm getting off topic here. Well, that tells us a little bit about Bastet, but it doesn't seem to help our case much. Didn't that note say something about beef? Let's look under beef too, just in case. Beef, the meat taken from cattle. The next entry is beef eater. It says that beef eater is the nickname of the yeoman warders, the people who help guard the Tower of London. That's strange. One of the four people who bought the cat statues was from Tower of London. It says here no one is sure exactly where the nickname Beef Eater came from. It might have something to do with the fact that the warders were paid enough to eat well during times when other people may not have been able to afford luxuries like beef. Let's over to head over to the tower. We've already done the tower, which means we've been to all the places and we can solve this mystery. All right, let's solve the mystery. Read all the clues and pick up to five clues. Uh, we don't need to, the instructions notes. McCavin's notes said that the head eater of beef bought the real Egyptian cat statue. Uh, the yeoman warders at the Tower of London are called beef eaters. Mr. Hargreaves is the head of all the yeoman warders. 
Let's solve. That's the evidence that we need that would get the cat. Now pick out the person who bought the real statue. That would be Mr. Hardgreaves, the head eater of beef. You got it. Or I should say we got it. McCavy's notes said that the real Egyptian statue of Bastet was placed among a bunch of copies at Covent Garden yesterday and that the head eater of beef bought the real one. Inspector Gage discovered that only three people bought souvenir copies of the Bastet statue, uh, including Mr. Hargreaves, who is the in charge of all the yeoman warders at the Tower of London. The yeoman, yeoman warders are also called beef eaters, that would make him the head beef eater or the head eater of beef. His cat statue is the real Egyptian artifact. We're going to make a terrific member of the Eagle Eye Detective Agency. Wow, that was the tutorial, and it's a lot more reading than I thought it would be. Okay, we're going to have to keep this to five mysteries per stream for ten dedicated streams. American Detectives Retrieve Egyptian Artifact. There we go. And anytime we want to go back and play the Pratt tutorial again and replay that mission, we can go there. But for now, that's all for gaming. I've been all over the place tonight, haven't I? Two hours into stream. And, all right, let's get into the Kazusical. Oh, well, uh, the browser's still going because that was a browser tab. Okay, that's what's going on here. The For the Kazusical tonight, we are doing, or I should say I'm performing Encanto because I've been hooked. Give me a moment to get set up. I have a new way of doing the Kazusical so that the uh, no chance of having that technical error that I had, which got me the copyright strike that one time. So I'm actually running my backing track through headphones off of another device. Let me just pull things up here. Ah, uh, looks like I have to manually control this. That's going to suck. Okay. <laughs> Good enough warm up. Let's just get going. And let me minimize this because it's distracting. And let's go. Ha 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 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
my Kazusical version of Disney's Encanto. And now, and now that I've shared what's going on with the channel, and we looked at some technical things together, we looked at a couple of games that I've been into, and now we are going, it's late. There may not be anyone to raid tonight, but we are certainly going to take a look because that's my end of stream tradition is to rate somebody. So let me go on to Twitch real quick. Give me a moment because it looks like the playback is still a little bit off. <laughs> Yeah, playback several minutes behind. So I'm going to do the raid introduction, and then I'm going to do the raid. I'm going to wait a few minutes for this to catch up. Let's see who's actually on. There's only one musician on. I usually like to rage musicians as opposed to gamers. Let me just take a quick look and see what's going on here. That stream hasn't really started yet, so that might be a good call, but that's a gaming stream. Music stream, three and a half hours. The queue is closed except priority requests, which means there's still probably a few songs left. We're going to rate John Lee Music because he's the only... I don't know anything about him. I followed him once after being on someone else's raid. Um, never actually listened to his stream more than a couple songs. He's probably good. The other raider wouldn't, I mean, the other streamer that I watched that one time wouldn't have rated him if he wasn't good. And I followed him, which meant that when I listened to those one or two songs, I thought he was good. So I guess he's good. We'll check him out. We'll raid John Lee Music. But I'm going to wait for my stream playback to catch up before I actually send the raid. Uh -huh. 